Biden's new job numbers are out and they are ugly. In short, real jobs are down while DoorDash and government jobs are the entire Bidenomics miracle. My colleague EJ and Tony broke it down in a Twitter thread, so let's dig in. Headline jobs rose 209,000 in the June report, which was 30,000 less than expected, so that's a miss. That's also the lowest in two and a half years, and it took the unemployment rate to 3.6%, which is up just a smidge on the year. Meanwhile, the previous two months were revised down by 110,000 jobs. By the way, we've seen this every report this year with numbers being revised down, meaning either government statisticians are getting very bad at their job or they are intentionally reporting rosy numbers, then revising them down when nobody is looking. So accounting for the revisions leaves about 100,000 jobs on the month. Keep in mind, population growth cancels about 70,000 of those, leaving 30, essentially flat on a worker population of 162 million. But it gets worse. For starters, most of those net jobs were actually government jobs, which don't grow the economy. In fact, many shrink it. We can debate whether an EPA bureaucrat cancels five or 10 workers, but they certainly aren't growing anything. They are parasites. So that takes us to productive jobs growing actually below the pace of population. Finally, the big one, job composition. The BLS reported that multiple job holders rose a amazing 233,000 on the month, which completely swamped the alleged job gains. In addition, 452,000 more people were working part-time for, quote, economic reasons, in other words, not by choice, which BLS attributes to people whose, quote, hours were reduced due to slack work or business conditions. In other words, companies are reducing hours, which is the next step to layoffs. Take it together and real jobs plunged by over 100,000 with more to come, while Americans made up the difference delivering DoorDash, not even counting the 2 million plus workers who are still missing. I've mentioned in previous videos that they've dropped out of the labor force since COVID. Many are now on government benefits where they're no longer counted as unemployed. Statistically, they're retired. So what's next? Erosion in job composition is hitting wages, which came in flat after inflation. That's actually surprising since inflation was supposed to have trickled into wages by now. I've got an upcoming video on that. Even so, flat wages is bad news for the Fed, who's trying to make wages go down so people stop spending and the federal government can spend instead. So expect the Fed to turn this into yet more rate hikes, limited at this point only by their fear of crashing yet more banks. Month by month, Americans are losing their financial buffer, their full-time jobs, their savings, all while their debts pile up amid Washington happy talk about the amazing feats of Bidenomics. As post-pandemic pent-up demand fades and the economy drops into full-blown recession, on present trends, there will be millions of Americans up against the wall. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.